Hello world, welcome back to NixNexus and today we are again out for an exciting journey to understand Linux in a beginner friendly guide. This brief series will be divided into three parts. Part 1 will gently introduce you to the world of operating systems, its major players and their history. In part 2, we will learn about GNU slash Linux as well as learn how Linux came into existence, its philosophy and business model. In the final chapter, we will carefully highlight the similarities as well as the key differences that sets Linux apart from other operating systems. Through this guide series, our aim is to make Linux more approachable as well as comprehensible for you. And we believe that by the end of this series, you will not only grasp the basic of Linux, but also gain a solid understanding of the ethos that fuels the vibrant Linux community. So let's begin. An operating system is just like any other program you install in your computer, but it has extra privileges, which allows it to manage and interact with computer's hardware like memory, storage and CPU. Operating systems also manages software resources to provide common services for computer programs. It is the core of a connection between hardware, software and application. You can think about an operating system as an intermediary program that stands between your computer and all the programs you run on it. It manages basic but the crucial tasks such as file management, memory management, process management, input-output management, as well as controls the peripheral devices like mouse, keyboard, etc. Operating systems were created to simplify the use of computers in the first place. Though nowadays, any given program can worry only about executing its core features and then leaves all the basic functionalities to operating systems. But things were always not like this. Actually, during 1940s and 50s, programs were written to run on a specific machine. That means a program could run on only one computer model. If you wanted to execute the same program on a different computer model, programmers would need to write the whole program again because the hardware was configured in a different way. There was no layer of abstraction between the running program and the actual hardware. So by 1960s, industry giants such as IBM and AT&T started working on operating system that could act as a layer of abstraction between the hardware and software, which would simplify the implementation of new programs. The biggest output that came out of this project was Unix, developed in Bell Labs at AT&T by developer Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. In modern days, when speaking about personal desktop or laptop computers, the three most used operating systems which come to our mind are Microsoft Windows, Apple's Mac and Linux based operating system. So let's learn a little bit about Windows and Mac operating system in this chapter. To tackle Unix, IBM partnered with Microsoft for an operating system which can be used on IBM machines. And as a result of this, in 1981, Microsoft released a CLI-based operating system called MS-DOS. MS-DOS was developed to be compatible with IBM PCs and it was very successful about it. But to make it more accessible, it need to have a graphical user interface. And that is what Microsoft shipped in 1985 with Windows 1.0. Since then, Windows has released many versions like XP, Vista, 7 and so on and has made itself the most widely used operating system worldwide. Accessibility of Windows and the fact that it comes pre-installed in most of the personal computers have made it the most popular operating system in the world. Regarding its business model, strategy of Windows is to flood the market and make its system as accessible and easy to use as possible. Their primary target customer are the general users, so not much importance is given to customization, security or performance. One thing we had to keep in our mind is that Windows is a private piece of software, meaning its source code is public not available. Only Microsoft can access it. Earlier, if you wanted to buy a copy of Windows or upgrade the Windows version, you had to pay for it. But with the latest release, Windows has adopted a freemium model. Under this business model, you can access most of the software functionalities for free but had to pay to access particular features. The key to understanding this shift is to understand that Microsoft has hugely diversified its business. Xbox in gaming, Azure in cloud platform, LinkedIn in social networks being in search engines are just few of them. By making Windows free, they keep flooding the market and make it even easier for people to adopt it as their default operating system. Another thing to keep in mind is that Windows shows advertisement within their operating systems, so it can be thought as an advertising platform as well. 
macOS or previously called OS X is the line of operating system created by Apple. It comes pre-installed in all Macintosh computers or Macs. The first version of macOS was released in 1984 and it was the first personal computer operating system that had a built-in graphical user interface. macOS was built on top of a Unix-like operating system which is why macOS shares many of its common characteristics with the Linux operating systems. Apple's business model is mainly based on differentiation and exclusivity. Unlike Microsoft, Apple makes both hardware and the software for their programs. Apple's software runs only on their own machine. In fact, fact, you cannot run any software you want in their hardware and you cannot even install their software anywhere else other than Mac machines. You need to buy their whole package. Unlike Microsoft, whose idea is to make the product as widely available and easy to get as possible, Apple aims to make their product top quality but very pricey and incompatible with other hardwares. So, as we conclude our journey through the records of operating system history, we have witnessed the transformative evolution from the early machine-specific programs to the inception of Unix and finally the advent of modern operating systems. The landscape of computing has changed significantly, laying the groundwork for the diverse operating system we encounter today. So stay tuned for part 2 where we will delve into the fascinating world of GNU slash Linux, exploring its birth, philosophy and the unique principles that defines its character. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring.